Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about taking his name. And you probably heard the phrase taking the Lord's name in vain or uh, many Christians and their prayers in the name of Jesus. But have you ever really thought about what that actually means? Well, let's talk about it today. Many a high school girl scribbles in her notebook during a boring class as she daydreams about the great love of her life. If she married him, would she keep her own name? Should she hyphenate the name? Mrs. John Smith, Mary Smith, Mrs. Mary Smith Jones. Should she just keep her own name altogether? But if she actually becomes engaged, things become a little bit different. As her wedding day approaches, a bride finds herself in a maze of paperwork. If she takes her husband's surname, she'll have to file papers to legally change her own name. She will have to share a joint bank account with her husband, for example. At some point in her marriage, she may have to sign medical release forms on behalf of her husband if he is incapacitated in some sort of way. She may become his power of attorney at one point. We are the brides of Christ, and he gives us full authority and permission to use his name as his representatives in a legal sense. With our hearts stamped with his official seal, we are his beloved. We now carry the spiritual credentials and authority that gives us the power to speak on his behalf as we carry out his business here on earth. However, we are only given this authority through a heart relationship with him. And he will only release that authority from a place of intimacy, husbands and wives. After all, a wise man would not allow somebody to represent him if he was not already established in a relationship of trust with that individual. God gives us more opportunities to increase our sphere of influence as we grow in relationship with him. As we walk in integrity, we will walk in his authority. God's seal will never be placed on a heart that holds their personal ambition above God's passion. So using the words in Jesus' name is not like a magic tagline that you add to the end of the prayer in order that God will listen to you and if you forget those words and the prayer doesn't mean anything no it means that what you are praying you are believing in your heart that god gave you the authority to pray whatever you are praying for into existence it's not just something we mumble at the end of a prayer P peter demonstrated this principle in acts we all know the story in Acts 3, verse 6, where Peter meets a crippled man at the gate. And they've got no money, him and his fellow disciples, so they can't give him anything. But he does say this, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter knew that it was God's heart and intention to bring healing to his people because of the relationship Peter had prior in his relationship with Jesus. He knew Jesus' heart enough that he knew that Jesus' heart was to heal and that Jesus just didn't have the heart to heal. He had the power to heal. So when he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he wasn't speaking those words because they needed to be said. He was speaking them because he knew he carried the authority to speak on Christ's behalf in that situation. May we never take for granted 
the great honor and privilege it is to represent Jesus Christ in the world around us. And may we never lose our wonder at the sound of his name. So fall in love with Jesus and remember to use his name in the right way.